This makes me nervous. Very wore down human trail. People walking in here. Uh, and we're gonna keep going checking it out, but when it's easily this accessible, uh, I'm not a big fan. Well, that looks like marsh right there. I just heard a frog. So we're gonna head over that way. We're gonna get off the path, hit the marsh. Yeah, matter of fact, I can see it now. It, uh, try to walk around the edge of it, see if we can find any bedding then. See what we got. down here in this bottom and the marshes up over this and over that and uh yeah over that hill and uh I come over it and I found this water hole and I thought man that's pretty good it's inside this bowl all up around the top of it and it comes down It'd be a good spot when it's hot out in the first part of the year well the first thing I found was that tree cut down and looked like someone had a tree stand up there it's gone now and I didn't think it was in that good of a spot. I thought this corner was better. And I come over and here's a old timer. That old tree stand up. You can see the old lag bolts in it. And then there's a board that he had cut across it there. Um, but yeah, I found this and yeah, he was way up. There's a lag bolt way up there, I see. So just the way they did it back then. So yeah, it just goes to show you though, you think you got a good spot, you come out, I'm, I don't know, three, four hundred yards from the road, and that's just not enough in Michigan, it's just not, you're gonna, there's gonna be guys, so, we'll let them have this spot, I guess. Right, so whew, left that spot walked the edge finally found a runway that's going into the marsh so cars behind me anyway so I thought well I'll just cut across and, and I got out here in the middle of this thing four runways coming together right here coming from this way and then one keeps going one keeps going so it's kind of like a crisscross so threw my camera up see what's coming out of them two runways Never know, I'll mark it on Onyx, which has been an absolute game changer. Um, I'll mark it on Onyx and go from there. Uh, one thing about this camera, if you don't turn that Rode microphone on, I believe you get zero sound. So uh, back there, I forgot to turn it on. I was showing you that track and he's still going across here. Um, I was talking about the magnet and how I'd like to keep it. My brother and I have passed it back and forth for probably 25 years. Maybe longer than that, I don't know. Um, probably 25. Refrigerator magnet of a buck. Whoever gets the nicest buck gets the magnet for the year. It's been pretty comical and sometimes pretty upsetting. Uh, one time I got it in the mail. He was so upset he didn't want to, he didn't want to hand it to me. So he sent it to me in the mail. I had killed a I killed a seven point on about the second to the last day of the season and he had it all year until then. Um, but it's been a lot of fun between him and I doing it. And he said, I'm not saying I'm a better hunter than he is. He's showed me a lot over the years. Um, I just have a lot more time than he does. And that's the truth. He, he's a hard worker. He works 50 hours a week, sometimes 55. And he doesn't have the time to get out other than his few weeks of vacation that he takes where I can go pretty much year round I'm in the woods doing stuff so maybe this year I'll put him on one we'll see nah never mind I ain't doing that uh, but get out and walk these dirt roads folks you walk these roads and you'll find a lot of intel out the tracks are right there 
found a really good track back there. There's there's a nice buck around here somewhere. It's hard to get them in these hills. It's hard to. I've haunted these probably five years and I've killed about three good bucks out of here. Not crazy good, but decent bucks. Missed one real big one one year. At five yards, I ain't too proud of that. But uh, yeah, it's proved to be a good spot over the years. And I'm still finding out this marsh. I just found this marsh. And it was just basically looking at Onyx. And this is the way I do everything. When I go to a new property, I look at Onyx. I look at all the access points. And I go, where's the spot right in the middle of that? Because that's where the least amount of people are going to be. Usually, I find pretty good deer sign in there. I'm just trying to get away from people. And, I mean, look at the tracks here. They're all over the road. You could kill a deer sitting in that tree right there, probably. You know, so don't ever let anybody tell you you have to do it this way. If there was one way to do it, and it was the best way, hands down, everybody would be doing it that way. It's just the way it goes. It's not, it's not where you go or what you do. It's how you do it. It's how. Okay, got my camera out. There's a runway that comes through comes through uh, in front of this tree here. Right along this way, there's another one that goes over here. And then there's one that comes back that way. Front going up that up that little hill to that. There's a, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, gradual incline up there. So we're down in the pines. Like I said, this is where I killed that one real big buck out here that one year. But got my camera up. We'll see what's coming through. What's going on over here? Like I said, I haven't hunted over here in years. Might be nothing, might be something. It's kind of an kind of an overlooked spot by people. So but what makes it good realistically is in the middle of these pines you'll find little oak trees. So there's some acorns that drop in here. But like I said, up there is private. Down that two tracks, all private on the other side. And then over here in front of me is a clear cut. There's a couple clear cuts over there actually. And they're about 10 years old now. And they're really thick in there. So what the deer do is they go from that clear cut to this private. They go back and forth. And uh, you know, scavenge on the acorns in between and whatever else. And the river's down here about, I don't know, quarter mile. So there's little, uh, little things of water for them in here. They really got everything they need. And like I said, it's just kind of an overlooked spot. You're not going to come in here and see 30 deer. You're not going to do that. But you, you'll come in and see some deer. Um, but, you know, to me, it's, it's not about how many deer you see. And I know people get discouraged if they come out and they only see one deer or two deer. They get discouraged. And, oh, the DNR is cutting the deer herd and all that. And I, I got my own issues with that, too. But to me... I'm no longer going out in the woods trying to see 30 deer. I'm not doing that. I'm trying to see one deer. And if I can see that one deer, I'm good. And the issue is that, you know, you think about all the times you're in the woods, how many times do you see a big buck? Not very often. Once a year, twice a year, depending on, you know, if you start hunting multiple states, and got different areas and private land, and all, that's a whole nother deal, but hunting state land, how often do you actually see a big one? And that's a lot of going out in the woods and not seeing any deer. That's what that is. Or going out there and just seeing very few deer. But when you see that one deer, that's what makes it all worth it. So.